this is sound check from Kit Williams. Am I supposed to click the start video to be able to be seen? Yes, Kit. That way we can see you. Otherwise, we just see where it says Kit Williams on it. <laughs> I'm sorry to inflict this on you on a Monday morning, but there it went. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you should be good. Okay, thank you. Uh, it started live, and there's the audio. Okay, thanks. No problem. We're still a few minutes. Sorry, yeah. We're still waiting on Max. We have about two minutes, kid. No, that's fine. First, I want to thank the Election Commission for giving us a brief opportunity to discuss the polling place signs when this was brought up to the City Board of Health on Wednesday during their regular meeting. There were some concerns about it, and so we've worked on a little bit, and actually I have here with me Dr. Martha Sharkey, who is the City Health Officer, who also works with the City Board of Health, and I think she'll explain to you what the City Board of Health was concerned about. Good morning. Thanks y'all for letting us have this time. Really do appreciate it. Um, first of all, this all started um, when the university got a polling place on campus and they were very excited about that. But as y'all have probably followed in the news, once the university students gather and they have a possibility of being maskless, this virus tends to spread. So the university, um, in particular, um, Pat Walker Health Center, was anxious and asked me to look into this. So I called down and I'm not sure to which of you I spoke to, but had a very good conversation about what was going on, felt very good about everything you were doing. And then there was a great piece um, in the newspaper yesterday um, talking about the election commission's um, COVID-19 mitigation. Um, then the signage that was sent to the university um, caused some people to be alarmed because it was on the pictogram it showed social distancing, but the little pictures didn't, um, the people didn't have a mask on. And there was no mention of, you know, please wear a mask, anything. It, it, but you did mention the governor's um, mandate in which polling sites are excluded from the mask mandate. Um, and so we had a long discussion about ways to possibly have a some signage that encouraged mask wearing, but was it contradictory to the mask mandate? Um, so Friday, the city hall and Kit in particular worked on some tweaks to this to that 
sign that was sent over. And if I could share my screen, let's see if I can. Um, I'm not able to. Can somebody enable that? Is that going to be possible? So Debbie's watching it in her office, so she'll let IT know to see if that can be enabled. Okay. Um, but basically, um, the sign said, you know, please social distance. And it had the two figures six feet apart. Um, what the city, um, what Kit worked on and uh, got a, you know, the mayor looked at and liked was it said, please um, practice social di distancing and wear a mask in the little um, people have masks on, on them. Um, and then it does mention <clears throat> You know, that per the governor's uh, mandate that you may remove your mask you know, for voting procedures. So that is basically what it says. And if I can't share it, I can send it over. Um, again, it was just a, our rough draft of what we thought might be a little bit more encouraging of mask wearing and trying to keep everybody safe. And I know y'all are very anxious about keeping your poll workers safe. Um, during this time and keeping the, the virus spread as minimal as possible. And again, we thank you for all your hard work. We know that this is extra, extra time and pressure on y'all during an already stressful election. So we really do appreciate your, your attention to this. Do you have access to that image that you could email me and yes. I could print and have brought into the meeting? Let's see. I do, certainly. Uh, I thought we were going to be able to send it this way, but let me, uh, I might, don't know what I'll do. I might leave the meeting by mistake, but I'll get to my email and send it to you. <laughs> hey, Jennifer or Debbie, if you're listening, can you bring a copy of what the polling place signage is? Do you have it? Do you have one? Yeah, I, I'll so send this is it. Oh, no. This is what, and, and Jennifer, I haven't seen any of this. Is this what the governor's office sent us? Did I understood they were going to send us a bunch of signs? No, this is what we put together, and then we just included the executive order on there because we knew there would be questions about the map. Um, and so this was what we had put together. Okay, so the governor's office is not sending us signage about mask, encouraging mask wearing? No. They, so they sent us 700 plus signs that we can't use, stand here, social distance, but they didn't send us any mask wearing? I don't know why I thought that. Were you guys under that impression that they were going to send us all signage for all COVID-19 procedures? You weren't under that impression. I thought that was part of what they were putting together. So, okay. Uh, Max, the italics statement on this form right here is what the governor's rule is. Italics, the italics. Mm -hmm. That's the mandate, and then uh, the staff put together the notice as you see it here, trying to encourage, you know, the uh, separation, the six foot spacing. And uh, in the statement, in the government, uh, it says in the last sentence on that page. However, face coverings are strongly suggested by insurance. So I don't have the governor's executive order in front of me, but I, and, and uh, Kit may have it, I don't know. But uh, as I recall, poll workers, election workers are exempted, but that doesn't, but there is still the governor's directive to encourage mask wearing. His state, that's his, his dictate right now. So, I mean, I think we're all agreed that the governor's executive order encourages voters to wear a mask, wear, to wear masks, but doesn't mandate it for folks. So I guess, you know, just seeing this for the first time, to me, this should, I think it should also, I haven't seen their example, but it seems like to me it should more expressly encourage folks to wear masks, even if it says down here it's exempted. So I, I appreciate you guys, uh, Dr. Starkey, uh, putting together an example that shows masks. And um, I guess we'll see that in a minute here. But um, I, you know, personally absolutely think that's something we should encourage folks to do, even if it's not something that we're going to enforce. If people come into the polling location, we're not going to require them to wear a mask. That's not what the executive order says. But 
I, I agree that the signage should require or should encourage folks to wear masks. The city of Fayetteville also has some extra masks. It, if y'all would like to have some in your city of Fayetteville polling places to have on hand. Yes, we do have uh, extra uh, masks. Uh, of course, we were buying them originally, but I think we still have a substantial number on site that we can take to the polling places. Kip, were you able to send that to, to well, me I'm, at J? I will say yes, because I just did it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So I hope that it made it there. Okay. Yeah. She, Debbie will check and then she'll be able to print it for us. Okay. Oh, and then also part of the, you know, what we were working on is the language, you know, because like, for instance, in the courthouse or um, at the university, the masks are still mandated in public buildings, just not in the polling areas. So trying to, you know, make the message as simple as possible, um, but expressing that kind of two sided edge of that coin that you had for the mandate, you're supposed to wear it here, but you can take it off here. Yeah. When I tried to make this sign a little bit more readable, uh, easier to be read by, by citizens, I changed the, the long uh, statement you all had about the executive order and said this, Executive Order 20-37 requires face masks be worn in public indoor spaces. However, face masks can be removed while voting or assisting voters. So I didn't quote it exactly, but I hope I captured uh, basically what the governor was saying. And I hope you'll see the mask here, I mean the sign here pretty soon. Is Debbie printing three of those? She, she will when cool. she, yeah, as soon as she gets it. So she's checking my email right now. I would have sent this earlier. I, I just thought we'd be able to share the screen, so I didn't do it. I should have done it. Sorry. So what other standard signage did we get from the governor's office then, Jennifer? So, that's just so floor decals. That was literally it? Yeah, that, that was it. Just basically, um, you know, other than the executive order, which we looked up on our own, um, we really didn't get a directive from the governor's office on what to post, how to manage. So for instance, like what Kit was saying about here at the courthouse, obviously if you're doing business in the courthouse, other than voting, you're required to wear a mask. Um, but if you're coming in to vote, you would not be required to wear a mask. So we didn't get any guidance kind of on how to post that at the, at the different places. So, and, and honestly, they probably would say that that would be something for our county attorney to do because if there was a complaint about signage at a polling location, it would be our county attorney that would then have to defend whatever it was that we posted and why it was okay to post. And so I don't know if that's why the governor didn't send out or the secretary of state's office send out yeah, be more a directive mm -hmm. for us on exactly what to post other than, you know, um, we do know very clearly from, um, yes, we do know that from the state board of election commissioners though that it is an issue if a polling location does have a sign posted saying masks are required because then that gives the impression to the voters that they're required to wear a mask and for us to be cautious of that and those signs would need to come down when that, so say for instance, church is a polling location, so. I guess that's um, one thing we, we were, you said that if you were coming to the courthouse to vote, you wouldn't have to wear one. It was, her kids reading was that, 
you're still required to wear one coming into the courthouse, but just not in the polling area itself. However, I've heard yeah, to the then county then attorney since I that the courthouse is under him, not me. Right. I, my takeaway from that would be then we would be not making the courthouse accessible by requiring a mask to be worn inside the same as, as ADA standards. It would have to be accessible to the voter. Well, we, we thank you for your time and attention to this. If there's any questions that we can answer or assist with in any way, please don't hesitate to reach out. We're going to discuss this, and um, we'll we'll come to hopefully a a way that works for y'all and works for the election. Okay, we have until Wednesday. And the only reason I say that, we start delivering early right. supplies mm -hmm. on Thursday. Yeah. So if we were to change any signage, we would need to change it today. Is this is this signage that has been what stage of the process is this in? We would have see we use these for the Springdale special. And so oh, we right. yeah. we had we looked at this for them. the Springdale yeah. special. Sorry. Um so we, yes, already have these printed and prepared for all of our locations. Well, frankly, we voted on whether to require poll workers to wear masks, uh, voters to wear masks, and to, to post signage to encourage uh, voters to wear masks. I think it was in June, maybe it was in July, but after that, that was for the Springdale special election. After that, the governor issued his executive order. Then we had the Springdale election. Now we're to the general election. So technically, we haven't, we never addressed the specific signage for the general election. Now it's for the Springdale special election. And when we voted on it before, uh, that was before the governor issued his executive order to require masks in most indoor spaces. Um, but I don't think so. Because we had this. That was, this was the exact sign we posted yeah. for the Springdale special. Yeah, but the governor, we voted to not require masks in polling locations before the governor issued the executive order. Okay. He issued it afterwards. All I'm saying is we haven't specifically addressed this for the general election. So I appreciate uh, Dr. Starkey and Kit uh, bringing, us, bringing this to our attention and um, giving us another option here to look at and work with. We'll go ahead and discuss it and um, make a decision on, uh, you know, come to some compromise. And we appreciate your bringing this to our attention. Well, thanks for hearing from us. Uh, we are just concerned about the safety and also the perceived safety of polling places. We want as many people as possible to feel safe when they go and vote. We want the poll workers as much as possible to feel safe as well as the voters. So uh, thanks for your consideration. If there's any uh, uh, change you might want on the one we have suggested, please let me know and see if we can come up with something that uh, you would like. Uh, if this one is not 100% satisfactory with you. Uh, but anyway, thanks so much for giving us a hearing on this. You bet. Thank you. Please let us know Thank if, you, you. if you want any mask. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Bye. We do not have, so we do not have a supply of masks in regards for the general public. Okay. If the general public were to ask for masks, I think maybe I have 2,000 that a, that a local group has donated to us for, uh, for voters. Um, we have plenty of masks for <coughs> our poll workers. Okay, but not, okay, but, that's what that's so we did, we did not receive masks for, um, for voters to be able to have. And that was the other question, obviously, that's come up as well, is how do you, you know, if we provide masks, we would just need to set them out and just, you know, because we can't obviously right. say, hey, you forgot your mask, do you want one? Because then someone would see that as maybe as requiring you to wear a mask. You know, but we would have them, we could have them there if someone asked us right. for them. Right. 
I mean, you could make it easy. You could you could have a sign that said free masks available, whatever you want, you know, if you have extras and you want to give them to folks. Or I guess you could have the poll worker who is handing out the stylus at the very beginning yeah. um, be the person who well, would distribute them. I, to be perfectly honest, um, I don't think you're going to want somebody, if you want to wear a mask, you're not going to want somebody to, to uh, thumb around in the mask. Um, if, if you're concerned about safety, that's not the best idea. And I'm not sure where we go with that. But um, the masks are not individually sealed. They're usually in a pack of 10. I've been to Sam's and had them hand me a mask, uh, which I don't know where that guy's hands have been. Why would I put that on my face? And I feel the same is probably true in a polling site. So that so there is an issue there with cleanliness. I mean, you can decide not to take the mask. We're not requiring anyone to wear the mask to come into it. I think that's a that's a secondary issue we can well, figure it's out. It's not, not anywhere in the realm of reality that we're dealing with right now. Oh. There is nothing in the in any <coughs> regulations. Did you get one of these? I did, thank you. It requires the election commission to provide the public with a mask. Right. No, we're just talking about giving away free extra ones if folks want one. Well, <clears throat> yeah, but where does it start and where does it stop, Max? With, I, I that, with however I mean, many free want... masks we have from the city of Fayetteville. If they have extra ones that they want to let us hand out, if, if they want why not? to volunteer the mask, certainly, that's fine. But for us to have them at every location, if we're talking about that for the general public, that's not our that's not our responsibility. Didn't we do this in the Springdale special election giveaway extra masks that we had a limited supply? We brought extra masks to the polling location if someone asked, and that was um, so. Yes, we did. Um, How did that go? No one took any. But <laughs> was there a sign up or anything? Being, but with that being said, out of the 1,200, 1,300 voters who came in maybe only four people weren't wearing a mask. So it wasn't, it, it really didn't present itself as an issue that our poll workers were seeing voter after voter after voter who did not wear a mask. Yeah. Um, at, when, after having talked to the supervisors from that election, there were maybe two people at Elmdale that didn't wear a mask and two people at Rodeo that didn't wear a mask, but the biggest majority of the voters they saw all came in with their own mask on, but we did have them if someone requested, if, if they asked for one. Gotcha. But it didn't present itself as, as needed. Okay. Um, let's, uh, let's move forward. We have to have a notice. We have to have a sign. Um, I frankly, I think, I think this one, with due respect to the city, I would rather see the entire um, executive order or the this particular part of it on on the sign, which basically requires none of our poll workers to have to defend it. Yeah. And um, I, I'm suggesting perhaps we could um, draw masks on these little people and let that be the end of it. But um, I'm open to your comments, gentlemen. So I think I think I agree with you on the point, Renee, of of putting the mask on the little people there. Yeah. I think that's great. Um, I would just looking at these two. I would combine the two. I think I would cross out on our notice. Notice, please practice social distancing. It says while waiting in line for voting equipment. It's kind of surplusage. I would delete that. Please, please practice social distancing and we 
strongly encourage you to wear a mask. And I say strongly encourage directly from the governor's executive order down below here, which talks about the face covering. I'm fine with keeping that whole that whole section and subsection there showing the executive order. But I would I would cross that part out and say, please practice social distancing and we strongly encourage you to wear a mask. I think that reflects what the executive order says. And then I agree about putting the little face covering on folks there. So um, let's take these one at a time, I guess. And, and I feel like I feel like we're um, micromanaging here. But uh, if we can take them one at a time and vote on them, then we can. Jennifer, you want to give us your thoughts? <laughs> I, I, okay, so masks using the phrase from the governor's right. words, face coverings are strongly encouraged, I think prevents us from having voters complain because we didn't have any voters complain, but in Benton County, Kim did have voters complain during that, during that special election because they had accidentally left the sign up on the door that the church had posted about wearing face masks. Yeah. And she got phone calls and phone calls and phone calls. So I think uh, using the words from the governor's language prevents us from having, you know, yeah. allows us to defend the sign that we, that we are posting. Um, so, so yes, I mean, so we can we can definitely do that, um, and then the masks on the people. I mean that you can look at it two ways. Is that implying that you have to have a mask on, or is it just encouraging that you have to have a mask on? I I don't know. I just. Well, maybe we ought to leave that off then and just put what you said, the language. It doesn't or it doesn't imply that we're acquiring anything. I mean, with with all respect, Jennifer, if anyone stops to read the notice and the big headline that I just suggested, they'll see it's not required. If somebody's that concerned about wearing a mask in a polling location and not wearing it, they're going to know what the executive order says about polling locations, or they're going to stop and look at it and see. And And regardless, if somebody comes in there without a mask, you know, under the governor's order, we're not going to require one. So, yeah. you know, I think I think it's clear in the order. Face coverings are strongly encouraged. The policy is to strongly encourage folks to wear masks, and I think we should expressly say that on there. Putting that on the picture doesn't doesn't imply that it's required. Okay. Um, well, let's. Bill, what do you think about those two changes we well, both suggest? Yeah, I don't really have any issue because you haven't changed anything other outside the dictate of the, the governor. <clears throat> Number one, it's just a small italics down here at the bottom. Right. All you're doing is wanting to, you yeah. know, express it a little more boldly. Yeah, exactly. As I see it, um, you know. I get sick and tired of having to hold the public's hand at every turn, exactly. you know, is, is my concern. But I will say this, with the COVID-19 epidemic having gone on as long as it has, everyone in the world, every entrance, every office, every mm -hmm. business has a sign yeah. on their window either encouraging or requiring the wearing of a mask and social distancing. I don't think that the sign on the window is going to make one iota's difference because they're, they're, people are already conditioned to this. So a minor change that you suggested here probably is a non-event period. Yeah. So, you know, I don't object to making a change if, it, if it's a feel-good thing. <clears throat> but also our society over the years and uh, <clears throat> has gotten to where it lets the tail wag the dog constantly. <clears throat> you know, we're talking about a very small percent. How many people in the early Springdale election in Washington County complained about a posted sign wearing a mask? No, nobody. We didn't no receive one. any complaints. Yeah, so, you know, I think it's a moot 
point personally. I don't mind encouraging it. The governor encouraged it. I don't see any major changes there. Well, there's no major changes. I agree. No. I think it's important to uh, encourage public health, and clearly, mask wearing is an undisputed public health good. So, I, I'll make a motion to approve those two changes. Be specific in your those two changes motion. being putting face masks on the people, okay. and or in the alternative, it's, if it's easier to edit just swapping out these different persons that have face masks from the city's from the city's notice onto our notice and second change in the he heading uh social distancing face masks encouraged strongly encouraged that's the exact language of the order. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Well, face covering strongly encouraged. What was the What was the language I said earlier, Jennifer? I apologize. Well, I, I had I had too. I haven't had enough coffee this morning to. <laughs> and that's what I was trying because I was like trying to read how it was that you said it and, and make sure that that read. You said please practice social distancing. Period. Masks are strongly encouraged. That's not from the governor. You said strongly they encourage you to wear a mask. Or strongly encourage. Yeah, it's it's masks if, instead if of face covering. that, we need to do it exactly as the governor put it in the order. Don't you? No, not with masks versus face coverings. It's the same thing. It's one word for an, it's one word for another, in my opinion. And it makes it shorter and easier. It does make face, it shorter. Face coverings. And I appreciate that, but face coverings is a little more. I mean, I don't want to I don't want to use the term confusing to a person, but they're not used to seeing that term. Yeah. Masks, as you pointed out, Bill. This is not some novel thing. All businesses are having this. No one uses face coverings. They all say masks. So I, I, I would, gotta say though, how often when you go into a building do you look at their signs anymore? I don't. I've seen four signs on one door and four signs on another door and three on the window, and I'm going, oh my gosh, I don't even pay attention to what they say. So I mean, I'm I'm with Bill. I in in a sense, this is. Um, playing a game but if it's a game we've got to play i guess we play it but i don't know how many people are going to notice well the or read it the shorter it is in the yeah. heading there i think yeah. the more likely they are and i think there is no harm at all from doing this and there is only good to come of it so those are those are i've got a motion on the table those are yeah. the two changes okay be specific now on the part below social distancing please practice social distancing Period. Masks are strongly encouraged. Period. Straight out of the straight out of the executive order. Oh How does that right. work? All right. So two changes. Let me repeat it. Um, putting putting masks. There, there's a motion on the floor. That white. You can just put white squares on those people. Uh, and that's the first thing. White masks on the uh, form. And then secondly, below social distancing, masks are strongly encouraged, correct? Okay. All in favor of that motion. Oh, I don't have a second yet. I'll second it. <laughs> I'll second okay. the change. Uh -huh. All right, with that change, all in favor, say aye. Aye. Okay. All right, uh, the motion passes. Uh, will you make those changes and get them ready? We have not printed any of these yet. No, no, we printed all of them. <laughs> <laughs> and laminated them. Well, oh, we, you laminated them too. Well, it'll be okay. Re reprint them, it'll be fine. We, oh got, my we got time. It'll be okay. All right. <laughs> we need money. Good. That's right. The voters are that important. <laughs> it'll be okay. Okay. All right, no other discussion on the polling place signage, is there? No. <laughs> All right, certification of logic and accuracy. Okay, so today is the deadline to submit uh, logic and accuracy. I just really need Renee's signature on there. Um, this is showing that we 
made sure that a vote cast for candidate A showed up as a vote cast for candidate A. We voted every single precinct, every single candidate, every single issue both for and against um, to make sure that all of our voting equipment counts correctly. Um, and so this is what we will file with the uh, county clerk's office. And then, of course, we also are required to submit it um, as part of the election night reporting. Um, and I did that on Friday as well. So this just completes the process that we have been working on. Okay, Jennifer, uh, suggestion. Have staff make the change to the sign, door sign, and send a copy of the complete uh, revision to the city hall. Oh, oh, I can do that, yes. Oh, okay. And that way they can yeah. then share it with whomever. I uh, was going to say the exact same thing, Bill. I agree. And send a copy to us if you don't mind. Sure. Yeah. yeah. But if there's, I can't, I have to start printing today. Hey, that's, okay. that's so, fine. You don't have to laminate ours. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to and get big giant envelopes. Ah! <laughs> there is a big venue. Oh, that makes me sick. But, well, <laughs> uh, that's what happens sometimes. Okay. Uh, upcoming meetings, November the 3rd. Are we going to have to meet before then? We should not. Um, no. No, we will. Wait. <laughs> we will. Um, and November the 5th. I'm um, many, I'm sure. You want to give us an update? You're getting ready to um, <coughs> send out equipment. So Thursday and Friday is our delivery day for early votes so that everything is set up and prepared and we're ready for early voting on Monday. And so um, we will work on, on those two things, Thursday and Friday. And then uh, we also, we will start canvassing absentee ballots the Tuesday, not the first day of early vote, but the Tuesday. So we'll also need to get that room prepped and prepared and everything there so that we can start canvassing as quickly as possible. And you're gonna count in which room? We will actually be across the hall, across the street at the judicial yes. annex. We have a special room over there set up for us um, that's completely secure. We'll be able to um, keep it secure. No one will have entrance to it except us um, during the two weeks that we're there. So I'll follow up with John Luther in, re in regards to, uh, to getting that room set up. Um, but then we will have to bring everything back over here because on election day we will actually count in the form of courtroom so that everything is in is in one one building and obviously we can't do that during early vote. So yeah. Okay. Um, we've got everything set. So other we do. Uh, I was the only other thing I was going to say. We do have several polling locations where we have either partial crews of seasoned poll workers and then quite a lot of brand new poll workers. Um, a lot of them will work early vote. Most of them will work at least a shift or two of early vote um, so that when they come in, they won't be completely new. We will have a brand new supervisor. Uh, at Yvonne Richardson Center, and then we'll have a couple of supervisors at new supervisors, but they have been poll workers oh, before um, at several of our different locations as well. So, um, but yes, yeah, so we'll we'll be prepared. We have we still have plenty of poll workers, but just making sure that each of our polling locations are staffed accordingly, and um, you know to in to deal with all of the voters. We're almost at 140,000 registered voters. Um, we were at like 138,000 or 139,000 the other day, and that was the last day to register to vote, and Becky is still processing. Oh, wow. Wow. So it is very conceivable wow. that we will be above 140,000 um, registered voters. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Uh, what about our absentees? What so, count on those? absentees, she's well over 9,000 now, and she still <coughs> has more to enter and to mail out. Um, and that is definitely a major concern that we have is the late applications that we see coming in 
will only mean that those are delayed ballots coming in, which means our canvassing process on election day could be, you know, with a massive number of ballots. Now, she has been very successful with the curbside return. Um, it was busier this Saturday than it was the first Saturday. And I suspect that it will it will Continue. stay steady, yeah. um, which is great because the more we get in now, yep. then the more we can prep and, and have the canvas. It's the ones that will come in on mm -hmm. Monday and election day that have me concerned with just the sheer volume of them. So yeah, so it's conceivable we could get 10 to 11,000 absentee ballots. Uh, do you have a count on how many have come in at this point? We at least have, she has three full boxes that she's not scanned in from Saturday mm -hmm. that she'll start scanning in today. Wow. Um, and a box represents close to 400, three, it, anywhere from 300 to 500, depending on how they kind of fall in there. Um, so she probably has returned back close to 4,500, possibly. Yeah, now all of them, like I said, are scanned in because she's yeah. still working on that. Yeah. But yeah, so we we're getting a large number of them back. We just want to encourage voters to not wait, and we're encouraging voters to not wait on requesting an absentee ballot too. That just has completely. You know, she's dealing with two massive things going on right now in her office. So yeah. How many did she get back ballots estimate on Saturday? I would say she got three full ballot boxes in. So um, over over a thousand. Maybe not because when they're putting them in like that, you can't stack them, so they fall in. So a box might hold 300. So. Maybe. Maybe 900, Maybe. 800. I mean, that's a that's a significant yeah. number. I'm I'm that's a huge success, frankly. I'm that's that's terrific. Yeah, she got 500, a little over 500 the first Saturday. Mm -hmm. She definitely exceeded that, I would think, this Saturday. And voters have two more opportunities to return ballots. Three more opportunities, thank you, to return ballots through drive through absentee ballot drop-off mm -hmm. on each of the next Saturdays Saturday. at the county courthouse parking lot. Yep. That's great. Yeah, so, so it's been really successful, so yeah, so really thankful that, that they all oh, did that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, other business. Is that all you had? That's all. <laughs> okay, so you're comfortable you have staff enough for your deliveries starting Thursday, Friday. Yeah, yeah. We are into it. Yeah, we are. You bet. Other business? No, I would just say I agree with Bill. We're going to be meeting again at some point here. So right. if you need anything, set a meeting and let's talk about it. Yeah, let's get it done. All right. Yep. No hesitation. All right, well, with that, our meeting is adjourned. Thank you. All right, thank you. Good show. Okay, Miss Jennifer. Oh, yes. you're still in charge, huh? <laughs> yeah. That's a slide you out. Make that modification on that notice and uh, we'll pick up that. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, there's your pen. <laughs> For those of us who come so prepared to take notes. Hmm. Oh, are we off? All right. So. I'm off to really start my work day. Uh oh. <laughs> you guys have a good one. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. All right. Jesus. Have a good one. <laughs> are we off? I don't think so.